right, the, here we are, folks, the cosine law. And what we're going to do is we're going to split this over two days. For the first part, we're going to look at the cosine law involving sides. But for today's sake, I'm going to give you both formulas on one page. Here we are. The cosine law is used when you can't use the sine law. But in fact, folks, if I were to choose, I would say look for the case of cosine law first. And if you can't use cosine law, then use sine law. All right? Now, to be able to use cosine law, you need to, be, you need to use it for non-right triangles. When three sides are given, or two sides and one contained angle are given. So again, you have a triangle ABC, and you would be given all three sides, and you have to find an angle, or you're given two sides and one contained angle. So I'll show you what that means. If I'm given, for example, side A and side C, the contained angle between A and C is angle B. So that explains that right there. So one more time if you need it. Let's just go over that again. Looking here, you're given side C and side A. The contained angle is B. You'd be given those pieces of information to be able to use cosine law. All right, next. The formula for cosine law looks very similar to the Pythagorean theorem. It's A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC, so the sides that you're given, 2BC, cosine A. Whatever you start with, folks, you will end with that letter, okay? And that could be for A, B, or C. And you notice that whether I use A, B, or C, the letters do change with respect to the... Uh, um, what you have to find. So for example, if you're given side A, okay, just so that we hear, if you're given side A, or you need to find side A, you're going to use angle A. If you need to find side B, B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine B. Because A and C would be given, those are the letters that would be going here, and the last letter would be B because we're finding B. The same can be said for C. So the idea is we use this formula to be able to calculate for sides. And you can use it to find an angle, but what I find is that it's better to have an angle formula where it's already been isolated. Your book may actually talk about the formula in a different way. But with respect to this, what we need to do is understand that Angle, angle A is equal to the cos inverse of B squared plus C squared minus A squared all over 2BC. So what we have here, cos, it's the cos inverse, so we need, anytime you find an angle you're going to use an inverse. And what you're doing is basically B squared plus C squared, same as what you have in the formula, and instead of minusing 2BC, you're minusing A squared. So what we did is we essentially moved this to the other side and A squared. So we swapped these two to be able to get this formula. And we're going to divide by 2BC. You're always dividing by the two sides that you're given, 2BC. Now, let's say you needed the angle for B. Okay, what would the angle look like? Well, angle B, the cos inverse, would look like A squared plus C squared minus b squared over 2ac. Now finally, let's say we're looking for angle c. What would it look like? Well, angle c equals cos inverse of a squared plus b squared minus c squared all over 2ab. So the idea, folks, is I can manipulate the equation to suit the values that we need. Ultimately, the formula's patterning stays the same. So let's look at some examples. Today we're going to be focusing again only on the sides. So you're asked to solve for side C. And here's a question. Well, note here we have two sides and a contained angle. And we need to find the opposite side. As soon as you're given two sides and a contained angle, irregardless of what the question has asked you to find, you will be required to use cosine law. So we're going to find the value of C using the formula. Plugging in the values, 
A, B, and C, angle C, and we're going to plug it in. So every time we substitute, we just do this little bracket just to help you out. If you know how to use your calculator without the brackets, you can do that. But folks, I want to get rid of that C squared. I want to get rid of the square. To get rid of the square, I'm going to have C equals the square root of that whole thing. So we get rid of the square and we change it to a square root. Well, we take the calculator and we take the square root of that whole entire value and we get 34.9024 centimeters. That is the value of C to four decimal places. And that's all, folks. That's all you have to do. It's not that hard. Let's move forward. Let's move to another problem. Example two, you're asked in an acute triangle, DEF, and you're given information. D is 4.9 centimeters, F is 6.2 centimeters, and angle E is 64 degrees. You're asked to solve for triangle DEF and round to the nearest degree or tenth of a centimeter. So now we're going to solve. How are we going to do that? Well, first draw out your triangle, DEF, and fill in the information given. Once you fill in the information given, and you know you need to solve for a triangle, you should list all the angles and all the sides and put it in a box and put in the values that you're given. So now we know what pieces we need. We have two sides and a contained angle, and guess what? Because of two sides and a contained angle, we're going to use that's right, cosine law. So we're going to solve for E first. E squared is equal to D squared plus F squared minus 2DF cos E. And we take E is equal to the square root of those values, da 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 da. 4.9 squared plus 6.2 squared minus 2 times 4.9 times 6.2 cosine 64. And we get that E is equal to 5.9845. Now, here we get the whole four decimals. We're going to take this and now put it in for E and we're going to use 6.0 centimeters. Now, I understand that the answers in your textbook may talk about you using the single decimal place. The reason we don't use that is again, this is more accurate. So for building a bridge or anything where it involves more accurate values, we want to use at least four decimal places so that our values are more are correct. The accuracy is dependent, is very important, sorry. Now, we know an angle and its opposite side. So guess what? Because we know that, we can now use, that's right folks, sine law. We're going to use sine law to solve for angle F or angle D, your choice. So we set it up, sine D is equal to is over 4.9, is equal to sine 64 over 5.9845, and we solve for D. So we take the sine inverse of 4.964 over 5.9845, and we get D is equal to 47.3847 degrees. So we put that in to the nearest degree is 47 degrees. And then we're going to use SATT to find our last one. And guys, just to keep with consistency, we're going to use the original or the rounded to four decimal places. Once we do that, we can round it to the nearest degree and get 69 degrees. All right, folks, that's the end of this particular lesson involving cosine law to find sides. Have a numerical day. Take care.